Um, so that I'll begin with you. We've all seen what's happened with the Zomato share price. Look at a Nika, look at a Paytm, look at a Policy Bazaar. The list goes on and on and on. And now you're going to have the delivery IPO. Yes, this is a company which is almost broken even. Yes, this is a company whose revenues are extremely impressive. But the street's love affair with consumer tech is dying down. What do you make of the timing and this IPO? Meta, first off, if you actually go down the entire list, not just Zomato, Nike, Paytm, and everyone, but almost every single stock in the market is actually, actually in the red right now. Most of the market is actually underwater, and it's fair to say there are a number of macro events that are actually happening that have actually precipitated this kind of thing. Now, for these kind of companies, the stock market is actually a beauty contest in the short run, and it's actually a weighing machine in the long run. So, in the short run, all this actually seems like these companies are actually these companies are underwater. But over time, their the ability for tech to actually end up reducing costs and to actually end up increasing increasing uh, the cash flows for these companies will actually end up remaining strong for that. For the delivery IPO also as of now, a bet on debt. Delivery is actually a proxy bet on the entire e-commerce wave that's actually there in the entire country itself. The, per, the per cost of logistics in the country has actually gone down from 14% of GDP, close to about 9% of GDP as of now, and is actually expected to actually compress down to 6% of GDP due to the efficiencies actually being built into that. So delivery actually 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 promises that piece. Now we look at the other comparable companies that they that you can actually compare the delivery to as of now. They have eye-watering P's of as high as about 135 percent to a median of about 52 what percent as of now. Sorry, 52 P versus a 138 P. These are exceptionally high ones. So logistics is a hot market sector in the country. I think for this particular IPO, a large amount of it is going to be contingent on number one, how the RBI and the Federal Reserve actually end up changing rates. And number two, what the perception of the LIC IPO is also going to be in the market. Because LIC is going to suck up a large amount of liquidity that's there. So anyone who's going to go back in the public markets after LIC will obviously have to rationalize this entire, uh, it's asked from the market just to make sure it can actually fulfill that entire book itself. So this is the perception of what delivery actually has in the market uh, currently. Arun Kejriwal, if I can come to you, you know, because if you look at the updated red herring prospectus and we see the financials which are there for the first ni last ni uh, nine months, delivery is on the verge of hitting the green, right? Does that change when you look at the numbers, the price band? Do you think it's expensive? Has enough value been left on the table? I thought you raised a number of questions in that short statement that you made. We need to look at it from a couple of uh, viewpoints. One is, as an investor, uh, the people on the street who were putting money left, right, and center, applying for every IPO, whether it was in retail, whether it was in h &I, he now has a multiplicity of options available. Uh, tech, he was told, is, is the better way of doing business. Well, this is a is a is a sort of a convenient marriage between technology and bricks and mortar because you can't move goods in in thin air. You you can have a platform to do it better, but you still need a truck. You still need to to power that truck by diesel or by petrol and move it. You still need to do the last mile delivery. And let's understand that while e-commerce is an important part of business, it still is, I think, less than 15% of deliveries business. When you come to valuations, we are all used to seeing valuations on the basis of EPS. And uh, uh, like Siddharth mentioned, there are a, a, a P multiples of as much as, as 150 and 100 plus that uh, count when you talk of delivery, because the company has yet to make profits, the P is infinite. It's very easy to explain an infinite and get away with everything when you talk of an infinite P. Uh, let's move on. The business of logistics is, if I could say, in infancy because the entire business is, is very, very fragmented. Even uh, delivery with its impressive growth of about 48% uh, is still less than half a billion dollars uh, or just about $0.6 billion uh, in the last nine months. And if you look at the opportunity that they are, $300 billion, it's, it's less than half a percent. So there is opportunity, there is size, there is scale. And to this end, 
they have been doing acquisitions, seven acquisitions in the last nine months, uh, all told, all put together at a cost of about $250 million. They, they are raising money uh, because this is not a profit-making company having a track record. 75% of the issue is reserved for QIBs, 15% uh, for HNIs, and 10% for retail. So retail is going to be the tip of the iceberg, just putting in 10%. Uh, if you look at past track record, the fact that the company has not made profits, the fact that the markets have been on a free fall over the last few days, makes it difficult for investors to make a measured call in such a company. I, I, I believe very, very strongly that they would like to uh, remain on the sidelines for some time, allow the share to list, and then jump in, unlike what you saw maybe in a Zomato, maybe in a Paytm, maybe in a Nika, where retail was there in the front, backing the issue from day one. Oh, absolutely. So let's see how the markets will, of course, have the final verdict on, uh, uh, you know, how expensive, cheap or rightly priced uh, this IPO is. But Siddharth, you know, if one were to see, delivery is learning, right? Like when we and what one of the biggest lessons from 2021 was what? Stay away from IPOs if the primary issue is not large, if all of it is OFS. But if you look at the delivery IPO, 5,200 crore rupees, 1,200 crores is OFS. More than 4,000 crore rupees is a primary issue. That's an encouraging sign. No, it is actually, because I believe when they actually filed for a 7,000 crore uh, uh, IPO, I think the, the percentage of the OFS was much higher. See, I think what the previous IPOs have actually shown right of now, right about now is if existing investors actually end up leaving a company almost wholesale during an IPO, the signal issue to the market is actually a very, very strong one. So I think every single entrepreneur in the country and in every boardroom, everyone's actually recalibrating the OFS versus primary issuance mix is actually coming in as part of that. Now, you can still, of course, get liquidity through block deals and a whole bunch of other ways. But the signaling to the market actually becomes important because the market is actually above all of us. And the market, especially now, is extremely jittery. It's gone through It's gone through a large amount of stress this entire year itself from a combination of macro factors, the war that's happening in Ukraine right now, the supply chain restraint, and everything that's happening. And the markets have actually ended up overreacting. So I think all the boards are taking a more calculated call on these sort of measures right now to make sure that the signal to the market actually ends up being strong. And that way, so and that way the company can be judged on its fundamentals and growth, not just in the market perception or the market, or the, not just in the market perception itself. You know, the corporate governance these days, especially when you look at the new age companies, has come right to the forefront. And there have been a whole host of issues to do that. But uh, Arun Kejriwal, when I see the governance at delivery, if I even if were to see the board members, if you were to see outside the founding members from the big four, you have a former member, Deepak Kapoor. You have the global chair of FedEx, who's on the board. You've got veteran bankers from Mr. Ramesh Sopti, you know, who's a veteran bank of the country, last uh, was chairing Indus in Bank. You've got Kalpana Morparia, uh, you know, she's a veteran banker as well. So when one just sees the board, the fact that the company's profitability is going up, there is at least a road to profitability in this instance. What do you make of it? I believe on the corporate governance uh, standards that the company has, uh, one, one would not be able to find faults or you know loopholes in it. They have an illustrious board. And unlike many other companies who uh, tend to uh, select independent directors uh, closer to when they are filing the DRHP, this company has chosen to do it much earlier and probably for four or five years, they've had an independent board. It speaks well of them. At the same time, we also need to understand that this is one company where a large uh, amount of their shareholders have been changing hands every year as the company has evolved and raised money over various periods of time. Nainthara, I need to point out one very important thing uh, in the way IPOs are, are getting subscribed uh, since the new rules kicked in from 1st of uh, April. We need to understand that now the HNI funding is restricted to one crore per individual, and the bucket for HNI has been divided into two portions, with 5% of the offer or one third of the offer being restricted for people between 2 lakhs and 10 lakhs, and two third of the offer size being restricted for 10 lakhs and over. Two issues have come under this rule, and we have seen how subscription has spanned. Uh, one is the one, the one is campus. Uh, 
uh, active wear and the second is rainbow uh, children's hospital subscription level in these uh, issues was substantially lower than what we have seen in previous issues simply because of this new rules with money becoming dear and no listing gains of the kind that we were used to with subscription in the hni category of 400 and 500 it would be seen as this is the first issue where the hni portion is is 15% retail is 10 qib is 75 how people subscribe this issue as it is a qib driven issue if qib subscribe this issue 10 15 20 times things would be much better if it doesn't happen in that it would be a drag on subscription in the non institutional category yes this is going to be one of the tests that we're going to see with the new rules that are of course kicking in so interesting times ahead but siddharth bhai you know we will have to compare, compare delivery to the listed peers. So it'll be interesting to see how the listed peers, whether they will be up for a re-rating post this. Delivery, of course, has been saying that its biggest thing is this proprietary technology. Delivery, I don't know if our viewers know this, you know, because of the data it has, the proprietary tech it has, it knows when you like to receive a parcel. Do you have a guard in your building at those times? Do you prefer in the mornings, afternoon, evenings? And, you know, we all heard about data being the new oil. But Siddharth Pai, as someone who has to identify multi-baggers in the private space, is delivery one of them? Delivery, so it's it's very hard to actually underwrite underwrite a multi-bagger or something as of now. But I will but I will actually take one call, well, one particular point out there. Data being the new oil, data has actually become common across everyone. Now, what's going to actually underscore the delivery IPO is actually going to be two things. Number one, growth. Delivery has been one of the fastest growing, fastest growing logistics company in, in the entire country right now. And like I said previously, a bet on that actually a proxy bet on e-commerce itself. And now with hybrid e-commerce becoming more and more prevalent, that entire sector has actually been seen to rise. And the percentage share that delivery has of that sector will actually become one of the important determinants of whether this becomes a multi-bagger or not. So that particular growth aspect becomes important. The second aspect, which is also going to be crucial for them, is a large amount of data already does exist with the FedEx, with the DHL, with any of the listed peers that actually exist in the market. What is the total percentage of unique, unique customers that only delivery has vis-a-vis -vis the others? And how do they end up monetizing that data actually becomes important? For the DTC brand as of now, logistics actually represents one of the highest cost centers for them. So can do they actually have products, software products that they can end up mining, saying that why don't you actually end up, if you are delivering into, let's say, Jainagar in Bangalore, why don't you actually bunch up all your orders during this particular time between, let's say, three and five? That's when the highest percentage of people will actually end up becoming home for that, because that's when people end up actually leaving their schools, coming back home, and everyone's actually within the house. How do they end up monetizing that will actually end up being crucial, because you look at data now, almost every single company has a data scientist, every single company has a large data lake. Monetization of data is more often than not as much harder compared to anything else. In fact, in the US market as well, one of the largest, one of the companies with the richest PE of 625 at its peak was a company called Snowflake, which just said that, look, everyone has a data lake where the only ones who can help you actually find a sort of needle of, of, uh, needle in that entire haystack. That's a kind of, the, speaking that kind of language and bringing that to the market will actually ensure that the premium that deliveries enjoy can actually end up sustaining and they have the potential of actually delivering upon the multi-bagger tag that they've actually been placed upon by most of the, by most of the VC investors as of now. And I want to take that conversation forward with you now, Arun Kejriwal. How does the delivery stack up with those players that are in the listed universe? This one is, you know, galloping ahead and with a 50% growth, while the listed companies are talking of what, a max 15% growth. So we need to understand who are the listed players uh, which are there on the bourses. Uh, you have a Mahindra Logistics, you have a Gatti, you have a Blue Dart. So if we were to look at these companies, Blue Dart is primarily a, a company that He's comes there. to mind when you talk of a, a courier company. So if you want to send a document, if you want to send a small parcel, it is what comes to mind, something that is needed as an emergency. So you don't hear of a Blue Dart doing a regular uh, full truck load or a part load. They're not into that space. If you look up for Mahindra Logistics, they are more a logistics player where they are maintaining uh, stocks for various companies and doing just-in-time delivery as required by the end customer. Uh, Agati is more of a parcel service. 
Uh, they have been there for quite some time, for if I could say donkey's years, and they have not used modern technology as one would have thought. So while delivery is an interesting play on technology come size and scale, it needs to get into that those number game because for them, without numbers, they don't make money. They have invested a lot in technology. Technology does not come cheap. So while you have grown at about 40, 45, 50%, you have to continue this number. And unless you get to revenues of say 20, 25,000 crores per annum, you're not going to make significant money to make it matter. Uh, let's understand the company at listing would have a market cap of 35,000 crores which probably would be more than the listed players all put together. So you are starting off with a number which is substantially higher. Uh, people expect you to do well. Uh, while you have some track record to talk of, you need, you need to deliver much more to, to carry on with that momentum. So, Nayanta, I see one more, one more important point to also note over here is the fact that there's actually a low Sorry. base effect that is happening. Huh? So if you if you look at any of the listed peers for that matter, because they've been around for that long, their share of the market is obviously much higher. So the growth rate they can actually end up generating in relative terms will always end up seeming much smaller compared to a company that's actually fast growing. Because once a denominator, once it ends up actually reaching a sort of steady state and becomes a large denominator, the numerator, the numerator has to grow ex exceptionally large in order for you to actually deliver the 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 percent growth rate that actually ends up ends up coming out. That's why. I said, when the growth ends up tapering out and they become a more stable business, at that point in time, can you actually start making these sort of comparisons with the more listed peers? Otherwise, growth ends up actually wreaking havoc in almost everyone's financial model to actually end up predicting what, what will end up being the fair value of these companies using the traditional tools of finance available to everyone. Okay. So, Siddharth Pai, you're subscribing? If I manage to get a offer or something, if I manage to get an allocation, sure, happy to. Of course, happy to actually throw, throw my hat in the ring for this, huh? to, to support the entire SRP ecosystem. <laughs> Arun Kejriwal, are you going to subscribe? What are you telling your clients? Well, I still have to complete my work on it, and I would like to look at the Anchor book, because Anchor uh, portion would be as much as 42, 45% of the entire issue. So what kind of investors come into the anchor now, considering that half the shares of the anchor are locked in for 30 days and half are locked in for 90 days. You need to get that comfort that you have got good, long, only anchors coming in. So looking at the anchor, I would take a final call on the issue. Okay, so it's a big, big week for the IPO market. You've of course got LIC, which at the time of recording this uh, conversation is very much open for subscription. Then you're going to have delivery, which is opening on the 11th of May. We're trying to cover all angles right here on ET Now. I'd like to thank both the gentlemen for being uh, with on the channel today to talk about this uh, much talked about public offering.